And welcome back to the news of the week ending August 25th, 2017. I've been gone for weeks. There's a lot of news to get through, so let's go through it. Let's talk Gundam to start off with. At Otakon, Right Stuff announced they'll be releasing G Gundam and Gundam Wing on Blu ray and DVD. Those of you fans of the deliriously over the top G Gundam and the at least as deliriously ridiculous Gundam Wing, much as I love both those shows, uh, they will be coming in 2018. Well, um, G Gundam will be coming in 2018. Gundam Wing will be coming out in November of this year, 2017. Uh, both will be released in two sets, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, there will uh, there will be a collector's ultra edition of Gundam Wing. They will also include uh, Operation Meteor and Endless Waltz with some extra content, um, picture drama, cast interviews, large art cards, things along those lines. Um, so that's pretty darn awesome. Uh, also, more lots more Gundam news. Uh, they also announced a new dub of Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny. Uh, Gundam has received a lot of dubs over the time, uh, and uh, apparently they decided this time to just redo Seed and Seed Destiny, and uh, all new cast um, being done at NYAV Post, the same studio that did uh, Gundam The Origin and the other recent Gundam dubs. Um, I got a chance to actually listen to clips of the voice actors doing the characters, and I gotta say, yep, they sound right. You know, Kagali sounds like Kagali, Lakus sounds like Lakus. Um, you know, thumbs up all around, I, no problems there. Funny note that you will probably not see in any of the other coverage of this, um, at the announcement of this, a, a man came up and announced, uh, uh, said that he is actually a person who archives old dubs, old English dubs of anime. And he requested that they, uh, that Bandai keep those old dubs and keep making them available. Because there are a lot of folks who are still fans of those old dubs of anime. Uh, please don't, you know, make them disappear. And there were two representatives um, who actually worked at Sunrise and Bandai Japan, as well as a, an, an American representative of, of Sunrise, or Bandai rather. And um, actually, I think she works for Sunrise. In any case, and they were all kind of like, oh, okay, we, we did not realize that that was an audience. So thank you, we'll keep that in mind. You know, they didn't commit to anything, but they were clearly like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, good to know. So interesting there, that there, there's, there's interest in that stuff. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, uh, more news about the new Gundam statue, the Gundam unicorn that is showing up at uh, Odaiba. And now we know why they chose the unicorn. There has been a lot of talk recently about how they want to have moving Gundam statues and eventually get to a Gundam statue that can actually walk. The unicorn Gundam famously has its, um, its head unicorn flips open into the V and various flaps on it opens up when it switches, it switches modes. The new statue will do all of that. It says there are Let's see here, um, over 50 locations on the statue's body that will actually flip open and do stuff um, as it kind of flips between different modes. So that's pretty darn cool, and um, presumably that is kind of the, the next step in the evolution of these statues, is getting something where a bunch of stuff moves at once, even if it's not like walking and stuff, such. So we will see, uh, that will be completed, let's see here, um, at some point. Uh, there'll be a public, a public demonstration of its feature September 24th. Um, so presumably it will be more or less done by that point. And that's pretty awesome. We'll actually get stuff uh, there at, uh, uh, that actually kind of yeah, transforms, kind of, sort of. Um, also news about Big Gundam stuff. There was an interview with Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, the character designer behind Original Gundam. And... Here's the thing, um, they asked him, you know, you're making Gundam The Origin, which is basically a prequel to Mobile Suit Gundam, what's next? The logical thing would be a remake of Original Gundam. And he said, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't do it. <laughs> However, the length of the story is no joke. And he's kind of on board and he said, actually, this, the original staff would be on board with doing a new a remake of Original Gundam. And 
uh, there was a report that there is a big project underway for the anime's 40th anniversary. That'll be in 2019. Previously, Gundam staffers had said that it would be really nice to remake original Gundam because it's just so old. The animation is just really hard to show to a modern fan and get them excited about that particular work. Uh, it's just, you know, it shows its age, unfortunately. So we might be getting a full-scale reanimated remake of original Gundam coming uh, soon. That would certainly be remarkable. Uh, th okay, so let's move on to, from Gundam news to Kino's Journey. This was a sleeper hit when it came out over here in America about, mm, gosh, 15 years ago or so, maybe. And there's a new TV anime of that coming out. Uh, they've been streaming promotional videos. Um, what's interesting is it looks pretty much exactly like the original anime series. It was based on some light novels, except the character designs have been, you know, modernized, if you will. They're a little more, uh, you know, Kyoto Animation-ish. And, um, yeah, uh, not like Kyoto Animation, but a little more modern style. And that's kind of cool that we're going to be seeing a, another uh, remake of a classic anime series coming out uh, in October on ATX and Tokyo MX and lots of other places as well. And Crunchyroll will be streaming it as well, so good news there. Uh, also good news for Macross fans, there will be a Macross Delta anime film coming out. Uh, no news on exactly when. Uh, this will be celebrating the 35th anniversary of Macross, uh, which is in, um, uh, which is, would be, that would be, was that this year or next year? Not sure. Uh, we also knew there'd be a new TV anime series next year to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the series, and we'll see just how fan service that is. All right, so let's move on to Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki and his coming out of retirement yet again. They put out a call for animators for the next Studio Ghibli film, the one that Hayao Miyazaki will be directing, and they have gotten more applicants than ever before, including more from overseas than ever before. So apparently the talent is starting to rise outside of Japan. Uh, the applications were started to, started to come in in May for in-between animators and background artists. Sorry, you're not going to get a job as a lead animator on a Studio Ghibli film. Those jobs are all filled. But yes, that's there. As of August 10th, they have gone through all of the initial applications and they're filtering through from that point. There'll be a, an exam in September, followed by starting in October with a six-month training period. Uh, the nice thing is, you get paid 1800 bucks a month, plus travel and social insurance expenses. Pretty darn sweet. Uh, uh, unfortunately, of course, you know, at this point you're too late if you haven't already submitted. So, we'll see. But uh, that does mean that there is progress moving forward on Hayao Miyazaki's next film. Pretty darn cool. Uh, let's actually bounce back a little bit to a Kickstarter, Nozomi Entertainment, launched a little while ago for Aria. Uh, Aria the Animation, Aria the Natural, which is doing extremely well. Um, last time I checked, uh, they have pledged $204,000, or they've had that much pledged to the project, with their goal was originally 110. So that is very good, especially because with that amount, they're going to redub, um, or they're going to dub uh, uh, the, first 13, 13, the first 13 episodes of Aria the Natural, the second series, as well as dubbing the first season Aria the Animation. So yeah, moving forward very, very nicely. Um, and the pledge awards are pretty reasonable. You get, let me double check here, um, at I think, at $50 you get Aria the Animation on Blu-ray, at 90 you get both Aria the Animation and Aria the Natural season two um, on Blu-ray. Um, and that's for pledging to the Kickstarter. So yeah, not too bad. Good news there. Uh, let's move on to Netflix. Several Netflix stories. We already announced that Netflix has an upcoming anime series called AICO Incarnation that they will be airing, um, let's see here, uh, sometime in 2018, uh, spring 2018. It'll, it'll premiere worldwide, being directed by the same director as Gargantia and Fullmetal Alchemist, Sacred Star of Milos. Uh, animated at Bones, too. Pretty darn cool. Well, now we know that there's going to be a manga adaptation 
of AICO starting this winter, uh, being drawn by Hiroaki Michiaki of Sayonaro Giuletta. What's interesting here is that usually manga adaptations are part of a, a larger media mix that are uh, coordinated by you know, the larger media conglomerates that are uh, responsible for the anime series. In other words, it's very unusual for an anime that is being launched outside of Japan to also get you know, a manga or a light novel or whatever other adaptations along with it. Uh, so this indicates that Netflix is actually following the Japanese model of building up a, a suite of genre materials or of different media materials around the anime series. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll see if that continues in the future with other projects. Uh, but it certainly means that Netflix is serious about that. Also serious about their new Baki anime series. Baki the Grappler uh, was an anime series a while back based on a very long-running manga. And um, we now have some more news about that. It will premiere in summer 2018 within Japan and in fall 2018 outside of Japan on Netflix. Um, originally they said it, it would be coming out this year, but it's going to be next year. And uh, animated by TMS Entertainment, 2D Lupin the Third, and Real Life, lots of other things. 26 episodes. Um, it will be adapting some of the manga storyline, but definitely also not... But not, I don't think it's a uh, storyline that was adapted in the original anime uh, releases, either the OAD or, the, or the, the, the TV series. So I think this will be a new story. Actually, I'll take that back. It will be adapting a, um, a story that was in an OAD, um, uh, based on OAV adaptation, but um, I don't think it was part of the original TV series. So, you know, new Baki story. <coughs> I'm all choked up. Not Baki. <laughs> there we go. New Baki for those who haven't been following the manga, which is apparently like um, 31 volumes. Yeah, good luck with that. All right, uh, moving on to some... Uh, so this is the kind of thing I like to cover occasionally because... It's often hard to get news about anime films in Japan and these little one-off things that come out. Um, back in, uh, let's see here, this was last week, an original anime film came out called Fireworks. Should we see it from the side or the bottom? Which is about a group of boys, I think they're high school boys, who are all trying to, see, to view fireworks from different angles in town. It's all over the course of one day. And uh, one of the boys, his childhood crush, meets up with him and apparently he wants to, she wants to run away with him. Don't know what's going on there. So apparently it's this, you know, little slice of life drama thing. Um, it came out at number three on the Japanese box office last weekend. That's pretty darn impressive. And um, uh, to give you a, a feel, even their live action films are, you know, are, are falling down. Um, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which was a live action film uh, in its fourth weekend, fell to number five. Uh, based on a novel of the same uh, name. So, anyway, good to, to, to note that there is that out there. Um, also, let's see here, moving on to other stuff. Speaking of, of anime films, Your Name, Mokoro Shinkai's film, is the first work to put three Blu-ray uh, releases in the top ten of Oricon's Blu-ray chart for three weeks in a row. Standard edition, um, uh, uh, standard edition Blu-ray, special edition Blu-ray, and the collector's edition 4K Ultra HD release. Uh, they're all in the top ten, have been there for the past three weeks. That's pretty darn impressive. Nothing else has ever done that. Um, Tron Legacy and Pirates of the Caribbean uh, on Stranger Tides managed that for two weeks. Um, so they, I mean, they were live action. Uh, Your Name is the first, you know, live action animation, anything that managed that. That's pretty darn, darn cool. Uh, all right, moving on to some of the lesser stories. I mentioned a while back Studio Artland basically shutting down. There's a bit more drama on that. The story's not quite over. Uh, 51% of, um... Studio Artland was owned by a company called Imon Animation Company, the Chinese-Japanese firm. And they've been basically trying to develop Chinese animation along the Japanese model. Uh, and they bought Artland as part of that. And then as, let's just say, as situations developed and they found out how hard that is, 
they have decided to sell their stake in Studio Artland, um, while the president of Artland retains his 49% stake. That stake is going back to a company called Levels. Um, I have not been able to find out any more information about Levels um, and exactly what they are, except that they are a, a company based in Tokyo. What that tells me is the studio is still functional, it is still a, a corporate entity, whether or not it is still a working studio. Um, so maybe Artland will return from the dead. As I mentioned before, um, Studio Artland <laughs> produced original Macross, Megazone 23, or Megazone 23, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Mushishi, other uh, uh, cool stuff. So, you know, the end of that was pretty sad, but maybe there's still life. Hopefully, maybe, someday. Uh, speaking of new life, um, <coughs> let's, let's keep on with the, the movie news, actually. Um, Kunihiko Ikuhara will be directing a new work coming up soon at animation studio MAPPA, the studio that did Yuri on Ice in its corner of the world and Rage of Bahamut Genesis. Uh, Ikuhara is the legendary anime director behind Revolutionary Girl Utena, um, Moaro Penguin Drum, and most recently Yurikuma Arashi. What makes this remarkable is the fact that, um, well, A, he's a weird auteur director, and he did Utena back in, that was 97. Um, let's see here. He worked on Sailor Moon, directed Sailor Moon R, S, and Super S. Then he did, um, uh, before that, then Moaro Penguin Drum in 2011, and then Yurikuma Arashi in 2015, and now he's doing something else probably in 2018 or so. So the, you know, that, that's a good progression. He's, he's producing more and more works. He does a lot of interesting things uh, around gender uh, that are just, it's a fascinating shows to watch. So good to see more things from an unusual person coming soon. Um, there are, um, okay, so at Otakon, I was at a panel uh, where somebody asked about Ikuhara and Hideaki Anno of Evangelion. And there's a rumor that Kaoru in Evangelion is based strongly on Kunihiko Ikuhara, director of Utena and so forth. And this writer said basically, I don't know if that's true, but it would fit. Like, they, they, they do have this weird relationship. So Ikuhara has this long, you know, sort of set of connections within the anime industry like that. Uh, so you want to see more, more anime by Kaoru, you can, you can do that that way. Kind of weird. Uh, Alright, uh, still staying in, um, uh, actually that's not movie news at all, so let me move back to movie news. Dope. The live action Ghost in the Shell came out in the UK, in Britain, at number one on their video chart. Um, that's pretty cool. Now there was not a lot of other stuff coming out that week, granted. But, yeah, I, I think the, the worm is turning a little bit on the Ghost in the Shell movie, which is, which is, you know, nice, considering how a lot of people just did not give that film a chance. Um, all right, finally, moving over into um, uh, still movie news, and this is kind of an interesting one because it's more a notice of numbers. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, this website called Cinema Today listed the uh, top 10 theatrical releases in Japan for the first half of 2017. That includes some things that came out at the very end of 2016, um, um, going all the way to June of this year. Um, of those films, that so that includes international films released in Japan, as well as Japanese films released in Japan. Of those 10 films, only two were made in Japan, and they're both anime. They were Detective Conan and the Crimson Love Letter and a Doraemon film. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that kind of tells you a lot about the Japanese film industry. To give you an idea, the, the list is going from number one to number ten. Beauty and the Beast, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the Detective Conan film, Mona, Sing, Rogue One, the Doraemon film, La La Land, Resident Evil, the final chapter, and The Fate of the Furious. Yeah. Um, they then listed, by the way, the top 10 domestic films for the first half of 2017. The top four are all anime. And Detective Conan film, Doraemon film, Yokai Watch film, and Sword Art Online the movie Ordinal Scale. 
So yeah, um, anime is kind of making some interesting inroads in uh, American, or in the box office over there in Japan. Kind of interesting. So anyway, I know there's a lot of news. I know I didn't have all of the you know, lower thirds all working there, but uh, hope that was helpful. Hope you appreciated all that, and I will see you all next week for hopefully a smaller, more contained, more reasonable set of news. See you all next time.